Russia is all set to redefine the definition of air dominance with its most controversial jet ever to fly. This razor-sharp fighter that was conceived as the long-awaited successor of the legendary flanker has been revealed as a fifth-generation wonder. Though the Russian Air Force is pinning their hopes on the plane to be their trump card to air mastery, the West has already labelled it as a copycat. Let's discover what could be the outcome of this aircraft engineering. Is it a genius or just a smokescreen? The aviation world was really heating up back in the 1980s, most notably with stealth aircrafts. The Americans were in the front of the pack with their ATF program, which laid the foundation of what is now known as the F-22 Raptor. But the bombshell F-22 Raptor isn't really as stealthy as advertised. Well, stealth does not mean disappearing into thin air, it is rather about being sneaky enough to elude enemy radar and hit targets. The B-2 bomber was meant to bypass the Soviet air defences, while the F-22 Raptor was about dominating the airspace before the enemy had time to react. However, the Russians reacted differently when they learned of this technology. They prioritised performance first and considered stealth second. That resulted in the MiG-144 project, their fifth-gen jet programme, which unfortunately went down in flames together with Russia's fortunes in the 90s. But the Russians still weren't giving up. The Su-37 is one of such self-funded planes that was a real breakthrough. The legendary forward-swept wing design brought a new wave of innovations in Russian aviation, in the early 2000s, the Russian government thought that the prospective Air Force complex of fighter aviation program needed a new beginning and the Su-57, designed by the Sukhoi Bureau, became the chosen one largely due to Sukhoi's reputation and somewhat gloomy future of MiG. Despite all the events related to the F-22, the Su-57 was Russia's daring attempt to have a share in the stealth sector. Nevertheless, the way to success hasn't been easy for the Su-57. The production delays have been a constant companion of its journey and the engineers were seen furiously shaking their heads when their dream aircraft went grounded. After years of secrecy, the Russian 5th Gen fighter Su-57 took the stage in 2010. Its first public appearance set ablaze the military forums, blogs and news sites, with a lot of people comparing it to the American F-22 Raptor. Nonetheless, the truth is probably somewhere in between and Su-57 is really unique. Let's start with the visuals. Like the Su-57, American 5th Gen fighters like the F-22 and F-35 have similar wing designs, but beyond that, they are different. Unlike the American counterparts, the Su-57 follows the typical flanker design with engines in gondolas and a tunnel between them for improved maneuverability and lift performance. Its vertical stabilizers are canted that is a characteristic of stealth jets for minimizing radar reflection and also serve as control surfaces. Coming to its nose section, which is reminiscent not only of the YF-23 but also of the NF-23 concept, based on the WF-23 prototype, the Su-57 retains horizontal stabilizers and adds leading edge root extensions control surfaces that improve maneuverability. Nevertheless, the design decision of regular thrust vectoring nozzles and exposed titanium of its AL-41 engines makes things rather strange. The deviation from fully buried compressor blades is eyebrow-raising, particularly in view of the Su-47 which had them concealed. For Russians, Su-57 is considered stealthy enough, despite some blatant issues. One of the noted issues is the strangely exposed engines at the side or back part of the aircraft, which greatly increases its radar cross-section as compared to its American counterparts. Uncoated screws on the Su-57 also raise concern, although not a major one, as both F-35 and F-22 have exposed screws, yet still maintain excellent stealth. But the main problem of the Su-57 is its engines. The Russians committed a major blunder by beginning the production of this jet without its new engines, just like a fault that affected many projects during the Cold War. Although jets such as the Rafale and the Su-27 routinely undertake their first flights without engines designed for them, the Su-57 has yet to be equipped with its proper engines. Rather than that, it currently flies with AL-41 F1 engines, which are excellent, but not tuned to get the Su-57's full features. The development of the new Izdalaya 30 engines is still underway and has encountered setbacks, preventing the Su-57's supercruise capacity. It is a necessary feature for maintaining high speeds in battle conditions with a full load. Despite these disadvantages, the Su-57 does offer impressive characteristics like 3D thrust vectoring, providing exceptional maneuverability and a thrust-to-weight ratio over one with a combat load. But in modern warfare where dogfighting is uncommon, such capabilities can be less essential. 
The newer ISDALI 30 or AL51 engines are expected to resolve these problems, providing super cruise capability at Mach 1.5 and stealth features. The introduction of wingman-style drones, for example, the S-70, can be additional to the Su-57's abilities through the provision of stealth and effective support or attack possibilities. Russia is also working on the Ozod, which is practically the same as NATO's Elint-16 and can be used to control military drones. The S-70 drone has been tested successfully and its development is already underway, displaying great perspectives. However, during the war in Ukraine and Russia, the question of financing such big projects lacks a definitive answer. Russia teamed with India in 2007 to fund this new fighter's development. Their investment came with a sweet deal. The license for building the two-seater model would be issued to them and they would get their own domestic production. The T-50 prototype and PAC FA program were affected by snag after snag due to the engine and the revolutionary avionics, including radar sensors. Understandably, India got fed up with the delays and withdrew from the project in 2018, reserving the right to buy a finished aircraft in the future if Russia could get its act together and start mass producing them. And it gets more complicated here. Initially, Russia planned to manufacture a staggering 200 of these fighters, but that number later decreased to just one squadron of 12. Nevertheless, there was a complete reversal of fortunes in 2017 which saw a deal being signed for 76 aircraft. Despite this, delivery has been at a snail's pace and only around 10 plus airframes are currently in operational service. The Su-57 is said to have made its name in Syria and the Ukrainian war, supposedly getting a kill against the Ukrainian forces with a Su-27. However, in this age of widespread disinformation, distinguishing between fact and fiction is a titanic challenge. Russians are telling a story about Su-57 as a strong force on the battlefield. It's a tale that could make some countries buy it, but they should be aware of taking it all at face value. When the Russian Su-57 is compared to the American F-22 Raptor and F-35, the Su-57 is fitted with the novel AESA radar NO-36 Belka comprising five antennas. The main antenna locks onto and engages enemy targets and also detects enemy forces from long distances. The two side antennas augment the coverage in the vicinity of 270 degrees, working in the X-band but with a shorter range. Also, two antennas on the wings work on the lower L-band for electronic warfare, which is not anything less than a digital twist. The IRST system is at the canopy front that detects thermal signatures of enemy aircraft and allows use of IR-guided missiles without radar, which is somehow similar to the EOTS on the F-35. The F-22 lacks this feature now, but it might be upgraded soon. The Su-57 utilizes sensor fusion technology, gathering data to maintain the pilot's awareness of the situation, similar to the F-35's DAS. However, the Su-57 is inferior to the F-35 in the unpowered situational awareness, which is provided by the excellent helmet and DAS. One disadvantage of Su-57 is the lack of an integrated targeting pod, which the F-35 has, and the latter can target ground-based threats while maintaining stealth. Still, the Su-57 is a capable platform, exceeding 4th and 4th plus gen aircraft and even challenging 5th gen fighter development. Its potent radar, avionics, stealth features and engines place it as a formidable entity. The future Su-57M modernization is aimed to solve these problems, including significant improvements in UAVs and other technologies. The armament of the Su-57 with the R-37M missiles of more than 200 km range increases its combat power. The Su-57 is going to be used as a leader for a joint operation to monitor and support combat. Only 10 to 15 Su-57s were built and the total first batch was 76, so it cannot replace the single F-22 fleet and the 1,000-strong F-35 fleet in the US and NATO. Unlike the Su-57, the Chinese J-20 currently in serial production is a more significant threat to the US. After the situation of the Russian army in Ukraine, it's only time that will tell which jet will win. The Su-57 along with the F-22 will be the ones to create the future aircraft designs and maybe entire generations. What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video and watch the next video as well. See you again.